I'm Diane, and I'm going to try to fix the 14 things broken on my Mercedes. Paul, who's behind the camera, will do the research and heavy lifting. Neither of us are mechanics, so this will be interesting. In this video, I'm going to show you the things broken with my car, and in future videos, I'm going to try to fix them. But first, let me tell you how we got to this point. In 2000, I fell in love with this car at the dealer, so we bought the car. I've taken great care of my car over the years, performing each oil change on time, using only premium gas, and always parking in a garage. So, I can't believe it has 14 issues to fix. Well, it is 20 years old and has 175,000 miles on it. Anyway, last month we needed an oil change. So, I decided to change the oil myself, with Paul's help, of course. Changing the oil wasn't so hard, it was actually fun, and it was a lot cheaper than paying someone else to do it. And even more important, we know it was done with the right supplies and no corners were cut. We trust it. So, we decided to see if we could fix other issues as well. But how to get started? Paul started reading blogs and watching YouTube, but he was still a little hesitant. Then one day, he started talking to the neighborhood dude, who was always working on cars across the street. So, we asked the neighborhood dude to fix the driver's side door that was swinging open without stopping. The dude gave us a part number and we ordered it online for $80. Then he fixed the door while we watched. We can't believe it only took one hour to fix. Even more crazy was that Mercedes wanted $300 for the repair. What? So, we decided to make this video and see how far we could go by ourselves. Now, let's go over the 14 things broken on my car. The first thing broken on my car is the door. It has issues. See how the door stops here, here, and here. This is the door the neighborhood dude fixed. However, a week after he fixed it, passenger side door broke. It swings open without stopping. Even worse, there are side effects. A divot started developing after the broken part started pushing on the door. And the window stopped rolling up and down. The second issue is some of these seat buttons don't work. broken too? You can't get in the back seat anymore and neither can you move the seat forward and back. Issue three, the trunk is broken. When I pull this button here or if I push this button here or if I push this button on the key fob, the trunk should swing open but it's not. So I manually have to open it. And when I do put things in, I fear that the trunk's gonna fall on my head. See how easy this falls down? And hard. The fourth issue is this broken fan. It's getting hot in here. Can you turn off the air conditioner? Sure, I can do that. That dog don't hunt. Hey, I know. Maybe if you took your jacket off. What? <laughs> After the up button broke, we needed a solution other than to roll down the window, which obviously wouldn't work in the winter. We played around and found that the auto button put the fan back to max. From there, we can turn the fan back down as needed. This temporary solution works, but what a pain. The fifth issue is this engine. I think there's something wrong with my engine. When I step on the accelerator, it goes, Ugh. it should go, vroom. I guess it's probably up to me to figure out what's broken and how to fix it. But uh, whatever it is, I'm pretty sure you could do most of the work. 
I'll do whatever you tell me to do to fix it. Thanks. I mean, we're not mechanics, but we're going to figure it out. And I have been doing some research. But uh, why don't we go over some of the things that are wrong with it that I've found so far. Okay. Sounds great. Well, first of all, since your last oil change, I found that we were supposed to check your, there's a thing called a serpentine belt in there. Now that belt basically is a belt that goes around and hits a bunch of pulleys. And as it turns, it powers the generator, the air conditioner, the water pump. It needs to always work. If it doesn't work, your engine doesn't work. I think even the power steering's in there, so you, you're gonna need that. <laughs> I've checked it, it needs to be replaced, but I actually, I don't think it's ever been replaced. And normally it gets replaced every like 60 or 80,000 miles. You got 175,000 miles on this, so I'm a little nervous about that braking before we replace it. So when we replace the serpentine belt, we're gonna to need to take out some of these pulleys and replace those as well. First, the idle pulley it tends to go bad. It's a pretty inexpensive part. A tensioner pulley, that puts the tension on the belt. Um, but the real failure that Mercedes actually recalled is the harmonic balancer. The harmonic balancer is a big wheel that keeps that belt from vibrating. And that's why it's called a balancer, a harmonic balancer. It, it goes right onto the crankshaft and so whenever the engine's turning, that's turning, so that turns the whole belt. So everything's turning whenever the engine's on. And the harmonic balancer needs to be replaced, and we never replaced it even after it was recalled. And so that needs to be replaced, but it's hooked up to the engine with a bolt that's tightened so tight, it's like 150 foot-pounds plus a quarter turn. And I don't know if that means anything to you or anybody, but I've watched some videos. These guys are getting big, huge bars, and they're like, just, just to like lose it, they hit you, and then, to put it back on, they're like, argh! <laughs> yeah, I'll probably help you with that one. So, <laughs> you ready to do it? I am, can't wait. This broken handle is the sixth issue. What is it? That's been broken for 15 years. What The way the trunk works is you can use the back seat space for trunk space by folding down the back seats. And then you can put a whole two by four in. However, if you put the seats back up and you're carrying a passenger, you want to make sure those seats are locked. So you lock them in place up and there's no way to push them back down. So if I had come here with a two by four and I want to put it in right now, I pull this button to release it. And then I could just push with the lumber and push the seat down and put the, the lumber all the way in. So this basically is the release latch for the back seat seat backs. Back seat seat backs. Try saying that fast five times in a row. Backseat seat backs, backseat seat backs, backseat seat backs, backseat seat backs, backseat seat backs. You know there's a reason your dad calls you smarty. Now I'll show you our outtake video where Paul was demonstrating our only working handle. And now if I use this handle, broke. This side's broken too now. Oh great. Now we have 15 things. Did I hear you say that we have 15 items broken on your car now? Yeah. That's the same as the other items, so it's still number six. The seventh issue is this bumper. It was designed by a complete moron. This is our third bumper since we bought the car. Apparently, Mercedes thought it'd be a good idea to have a brake whenever you pulled your wheels up to a curb. Actually, the pulling up to the curb part isn't the problem. It's pulling away from the curb that destroys the bumper. I wonder if Paul can figure out how to fix this one. Issue 8. Many of these lights stop working. Hard to believe, huh? The ninth issue is this broken speaker grill. Paul did it. I'm pretty sure it wasn't me. The tenth issue is this crack in the windshield. Is it even possible to fix a windshield by yourself? These scratches and dings are the 11th issue. Scratch. Ding.
Ding 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 ding. Who's there? Ding. Scratch. Follow me to see the twelfth issue. There's an oil leak under here, and I can't wait to fix it. The thirteenth issue is about the seat handle, but first, let me tell you a true story about it. Maybe I should narrate, since I was the one driving that day. You see, we were taking a day trip down the freeway, and it was my turn to drive. I was getting tired, so we decided to turn into the rest stop and take a quick nap in the car. The car is really comfortable. The seats go way back, and it makes it real easy to take a quick nap. Dai is a kitty cat, and as usual, she made herself comfortable very quickly and was soon asleep. I, on the other hand, started having problems. You see, my seat wouldn't go back without rubbing. Recently, we noticed the seat was rubbing against the wall, and now it can't go back without burning the wall. Since I needed it all the way back, I decided to try to troubleshoot this problem and get it back without hurting the wall. It seemed to me if I just made the seat go up first and then back, it would clear the area it was rubbing against. So I kept trying again and again, higher and higher, but it wasn't working. Eventually, after I had my seat upright and my head plastered all the way against the ceiling, this happened. We're crying out loud with all that racket. Now? Really? Now you want me to stop? I can't sleep like this. <laughs> How did you get up there? <laughs> <laughs> this handle that is used to get in the back seat started rubbing against the back seat paneling. We don't know why. Follow me for the final 14th issue. Hey, this is mine. Sorry. This used to be a double cup holder. But now that it's broken, the rule is the driver gets it. So that's it, 14 issues I'm hoping to fix myself. Paul already ordered some of the parts, so I can't get ready to go. <laughs> so hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. I can't wait to get started. What's that? What's that?